Thank you, Scott. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Burke County Board of Commissioners special regular meeting, Zoom virtual meeting, for Tuesday, July the 21st, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. We do welcome all of you that are joining us by Zoom. If you are on Zoom, we ask that you mute yourself. Please keep yourself muted, uh, except for those people yourself. Also, if you would take all pictures down so that we can only see those that, that we may be speaking to in the meeting, and we would appreciate that. Uh, for the rest of us here, please eliminate all the background noises that you possibly keep speaking. And at this time, I will do a verbal roll call. Vice Chair Mulvey. Present. Commissioner Abley. Present. Commissioner Britton. Commissioner Britton, Commissioner Taylor, Commissioner Taylor, did you hear me? Got you now. You just now came on. Thank you, sir. Okay. And the chairman is here. Commissioner Britton. Okay, we do have a quorum here. I do not hear Commissioner Britton. Mr. Chairman, I did, he, I've got a text from Jeff. He seems to be having some technical difficulties, but I, I did see him try to enter the room, the, um, the Zoom room. Okay, we'll continue and maybe he will be able to join us in just a few minutes. Uh, maybe he will text you back and let us know where he's at, okay? Okay. All right, moving on to our invocation tonight, we have with us Pastor Ed Stevenson with Arnie's Fairview United Methodist Church, who will do our invitation. And immediately after that, we'll be led in our Pledge of Allegiance by J.R. Simpson, our county attorney, who is also present along with the county manager and the clerk. So at this time, Pastor Ed, if you will join us for your invocation. Indeed. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you're doing for us. Father, we're grateful to you for all that you've done, and we're grateful for what you're going to do. Father, be with this group of men and these people tonight who come before this board with agendas of their own and those that are for the county. Father, be with each and every one of them. Father, help us to remember and never to forget that our opinions are, are our opinions and not necessarily the right for all concerned. I have to learn that only a couple of times every day. Father, we thank you for these men, especially the, the commissioners, who do their best, Lord, to lead this county and its politics forward and, and keep us on an even keel. Father, we are in difficult times as a country. Lord, hear our prayer. Heal our land. Be with these men as they go about doing the, the machinations of the county. And be with all, Lord. Our plea, our prayer is this, that in spite of ourselves, that you watch over us, and that you have your will in each and every one of our lives. We make this plea in the most precious name we know, that of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. All right, Jr. Would you please stand with me and repeat the word? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, JR. Moving on to the approval of the uh, agenda, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have had this agenda in front of you for several days now, so the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So move, Mr. Chairman, Wayne Abley. All right, we have a motion from Wayne to approve the agenda. Roll call vote, Vice Chair Mulway? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Taylor? Yes. And the chair votes yes. So that will be four of us, okay. Uh, has got on now? Mr. Britton? Okay, we'll keep moving on until we get him there. All right. Next item is approval of the meeting minutes. We've had two sets of minutes, one from February the 18th, 2020, our regular meeting, and one from February the 20th, 2020, our special meeting. 
Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion we approve the first one, February 18th. There needs to be corrections to the February 20th. That'll give them time to do the corrections and uh, we can look at it at next meeting. All right, gentlemen, you've heard uh, Commissioner Taylor's motion. Uh, I, this time I'll do the roll call vote. Vice Chair Mulway? Yes. Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Britton? All right, and I will vote yes also. Okay, so that does pass four to zero. All right, moving on to our next item will be presentations for this evening. Our first presentation will be the pet of the month, and that's going to be presented by Caitlin Settlemeyer, our animal services director. Hey, Caitlin. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks so much for having us back down here um, on Zoom again. So we are going to present our dog and cat of the month for July. Um, this has been a huge opportunity for our pets that we have in our care. Um, everybody so far has, you know, found a rescue or an adopter, so it's been really great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to share my screen and show you who we have lined up. Oh, never mind, I'm not allowed to. It told me I was disabled. So, um, can you guys still hear me? Yes, yes. Um, Scott, am I able to share my screen? Working on it, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, we All right, have now. a cat and a dog. We have Miss Lola. Lola is a, um, she's a three-year-old pit bull mix and she's absolutely perfect. She loves everybody. Let me find out where I am here. All right, can everybody see my screen here? Yes, yes. Okay, so um, let's scroll on down. We have Miss Lola. Lola is a volunteer favorite in our Dogs Day Out program. Um, she absolutely loves the water. She walks great on a leash. She has never met a stranger. She gets along well with cats and dogs. Um, she's just a little pit bull mix and she's absolutely perfect. She will make a family a fantastic dog. Um, if anybody's looking for, you know, just an all around sweet natured dog, um, she is definitely your pick. Um, she's very special. Um, she does have heartworm disease, um, which is a really common disease in the South. If anybody has ever heard about it, it's transmitted through mosquitoes and it is a treatable condition, um, but it does require treatment. But, you know, she can go on to live a long, happy life with her new family. Um, so we are still looking for someone to come and, miss a, and adopt Miss Lola. Um, she loves car rides, she loves playing in water, so she's going to be a wonderful dog for someone. Um, next we have our kitty cat of the month, and it's Miss Echo. <laughs> Echo is our longest cat resident, and she got her name because she likes to meow, and it sounds like it's echoing off all the walls here in the shelter. So she's a very vocal cat. Um, if anybody's ever owned Siamese cats, they kind of know what a vocal cat is like, even though she's not a Siamese cat. She's absolutely perfect. She loves everyone. She does well with dogs. Um, she'd probably do best with older children. Um, younger children, she gets a little excited and handsy, so she may scratch a small child, but she is definitely ready to find her forever family. She's one of our longest residents down here. Um, so if anybody's interested in adopting or fostering, um, we are located at 425 Kirksey Drive and our phone number is listed here. Um, we do encourage people to reach out if they need stay neuter resources. We have been completely inundated with cats this last several months during this season. So if you have a cat that is unaltered or a dog, please reach out to us. We can give you any resources that you may need. So that's our pets of the month. That's great. All right, gentlemen, any questions or comments for Caitlin? Caitlin, the adoptions are still going up, is that correct? In yes, percentage? adoptions are still going up. We did have a cat adoption event, event um, last weekend. Um, it was our feline frenzy event. We did adopt out 46 cats and kittens wow. that weekend as well. So this, we're, we're moving right along. We still have more than we can handle, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else, gentlemen, for Caitlin? Well, if not, for all of those that are listening and watching, please go by the Animal Services Center and take one of our pets home. They all can use a, use a great place to live. And 
we got good animals down there, well taken care of. The, the ladies that work there are make, uh, have made sure that these animals are, are ready for placement. So I encourage you to go by there and do that. All right, Caitlin, thank you so very much. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes. I believe Commissioner uh, Britton may have joined us. All right, Commissioner Britton, are you with us? I am. All right, you're on telephone? I am. My computer chose an unfortunate time to update. As soon as it's finished, I will join you another way. All right, that's good, but at least we got you by phone. Thank you, sir. All right, moving on to item number seven is scheduled public hearings. Our first uh, hearing tonight is from Community Development would be Zoning Map Amendment, ZMA 2020-01 in public hearing. That will be presented by Scott Carpenter, our Deputy County Manager and Planning Director. Scott, take it away. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. It's nice to be with you here this evening. I trust everyone as well. The request is uh, that staff has received a rezoning application from Brent Perkins to rezone uh, 0.88 portion of one parcel of land totaling two acres. The request is to rezone the property from its current zoning of R3 residential to general business. The property is home to True Lock Storage Solutions. The applicant would like to construct one more storage building at this location. The property has existing many warehouses on the western half of the property. Prior to 2019, the property was two separate parcels. The parcel with the many warehouses is zoned general business and the adjacent parcel is zoned R3 residential. In August of 2019, both parcels were combined into one parcel. So therefore, uh, tonight's uh, meeting and the action that we'll be taking uh, in the future would be to make the whole parcel general business so that he can expand that. The 911 address of the parcel is 3495 North Carolina, 18 South Morganton, North Carolina. The property currently has four storage buildings with 64 individual storage units. The applicant is wanting to construct one more additional uh, building with 20 units. The parcel has 450 linear feet of frontage on North Carolina 18 South. The subject parcel and four adjoining parcels to the west are zoned general business. The zoning to the north, south, and east is uh, R3 residential. Can you uh, go up to the existing land use? Thanks, UK. You can see from the existing uh, land use map that a whole lot of the uh, area surrounding the uh, uh, current warehouses is indeed vacant. The other types of land uses, the blue that you see there is actually a fire station and the yellow is single family residential. The brown and the light brown are single wide and double wide manufactured homes. And if you could go up to the next uh, one for me, Kay, thank you. There's an aerial uh, view of it in the warehouses. They're there on the uh, left of the red box. And you can see that a lot of the land there is uh, cleared uh, for this. The current warehouses do not have any uh, buffer or anything like that. But when he adds the additional warehouse, that will require a new uh, buffer. As far as conformity with the comprehensive uh, plan, the current land use plan for Burke County is the 2016-2030 Blueprint Burke Strategic Land Use Plan. The parcel is located in the rural agricultural area and just on the fringe of a secondary growth area. Commercial, institutional, and industrial development is expected is needed to support the residential and agricultural nature of this area. Many storage facilities would be considered one of those uses which support residential and other land uses. So we do believe it is in conformity with the comprehensive plan. As far as conformity, conformity with the Burke County Zoning Ordinance, 
currently the uh, zoning is R3, so that would be residential and residential uses for single family uh, double wides and mobile homes predominantly. So the requested use would not be in compliance with that. However, the requested rezoning to general business would be an allowed use and it would just expand an already existing use. And if we could go up, uh, Kay, to the uh, zoning map. Thank you so much. Um, you can see from the zoning map that most all of the zoning in the area is R2 and R3 residential. Those are the two uh, basic colors and the red color is commercial zoning. And this would attach to the uh, uh, right side of that red zoning and would just expand it a little bit. So it's not a spot zone by any means and the uh, staff has not received any complaints or any calls and there's never been any calls or complaints about this particular mini warehouse operation that we're aware of. Uh, any proposed commercial development would have to go through the site development plan approval uh, process and like I stated earlier that would probably require a buffer for this. As far as the planning board recommendation goes, the Burke County Planning Board met on May 25th, 2020 to hear this rezoning request. There were no citizens to speak. The board voted unanimously 6-0 to recommend approval of rezoning request ZMA 2020-01. There is no budgetary effect with this request. The county manager's recommendation is for approval. And I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have. All right, gentlemen, you've heard Scott's presentation on this rezoning request. Comments or questions? Mr. Chairman, I got all my questions, but one answered at our uh, pre-agenda. And that question was, is simply this, uh, Scott, since the last two weeks, uh, when we approved it from the pre-agenda to go on the agenda, have you had any opposition register since then? No, sir, M uh, Mr. Maynard, we have not uh, heard from any citizens uh, concerned about it. Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank any you, other gentlemen. questions? Or Comments? Hearing none at this time, I will open a public hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak to this zoning amendment? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I can report that I did not receive any written statements for this public hearing. All right. With that said, I will close the public hearing. And please make note to everyone here to comply with SL 2020-3. This item is scheduled to be heard at an additional special Zoom meeting on July the 23rd, 2020 at 10 o'clock a.m. If there is anybody that wants to um, send us a letter, that letter must come to the clerk by 9 o'clock, by 9 o'clock a.m. on July the 23rd for the special meeting that will begin on July the 23rd at 10 o'clock a.m. All right. Moving on to our next item will be informal public comments. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I have quite a few public comments to read tonight. Um, the first one comes from Diane Gettner. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. She's from Conley Springs and writes to the Burke County Board of Commissioners as a lifetime North Carolina resident and a longtime resident of Burke County. I would like to add my voice to those who support the removal of the Confederate statue on Union Square in Morganton. This statute is a reminder of the shameful past which discredits us all and sends the wrong message to current residents and visitors as well as potential businesses. I see the choice as one being cleaving to a false narrative of white supremacy and subjugation of other races and moving forward as equal partners in forming a better future for all people of Burke County. Let's live up to our slogan, Burke County all about advancing and do the right thing. 
As a follow-up to her original letter about the Confederate statute, I would like to propose that in the space currently occupied by the statute, a plaque be set up to honor lynching victims David Boone and James Lafayette. Those are the men I know about. The Equal Justice Initiative has a memorial museum in Alabama and their representatives will work with a local group to place a memorial in the museum as well as to assist in erecting a memorial here. This would be an important first step in healing the wounds of racial inequality and injustice in our county. A second step would be exercising our First Amendment right to freedom of expression by erecting a bulletin board or a flag along I-40 near the historically inaccurate and often offensive Confederate flags that would attempt to counter the hostile message conveyed by these flags. Why should a U.S. highway have the flag of an enemy nation flying over it? Would a Nazi flag be tolerated? If we lack the authority to order the removal of the flags, surely we can counter them with a welcome message of our own. If I can be of any help in any of the aforementioned efforts, I would be happy to do so. Thank you again, Diane Gettner. This is from Mary Jo Johnson of Morganton. She writes, for years I have, I have, pardon me, for years, I never noticed the statute of the Confederate soldier on our old courthouse square. Now, however, it has become a flashpoint and its presence in that very public spot is a source of tension between citizens. When I became aware of the true history of this and many other similar monuments throughout the South, I understood their power. These were erected during the early 1900s and again in the 1950s and 60s when racial tension was high. The purpose was not to honor ancestors but to further white supremacy by intimidating blacks. It is time for the statute to be removed. Mary Jo Johnson. Next is from Leslie Kern of Morganton, Deer County Commissioners. A few minutes ago I attended a lecture at the Western Piedmont Community College by a sociologist from Appalachian University who raised, who was raised among people of Eastern Tennessee who appreciate the Confederate flag to this day. He entered research on the flag and Confederate monuments with this opinion and found the historical record to be different than he expected. There were no newspaper pictures of smiling crowds at lynchings waving the flag. There were records that the monuments went up long after the Civil War was over in the time of violent backlash to black elected officials and African American prosperity. I appreciate there are people who see these items as heritage. The history they celebrate was very short and it disturbed some of us. I was raised in the South in a racist family and I don't like seeing a giant flag celebrating racism at the margins of my county. Some people report deciding not to shop, eat, or live in Morganton because of the flags. Since they are history, why can't they live in the Burke History Museum? Why can't the middle of our town and I-40 be places where all the citizens of the county can be comfortable? This is a time of discussion and a cry for change. Don't let us down. Sincerely, Leslie Kern, Morganton. Next, the letter is from Ann Moncrief, Dear Sirs, Confederate statutes in the public square define the word hoax. My brother died in the Vietnam War. I have an inkling of the grief family feel. These Confederate statues and flags do not honor that grief. They perpetuate a false story, a myth covering the truth of slavery. Respect that truth and remove the statute. Respectfully, Anne Moncrief. Next is from Wallace Moncrief. Dear sirs, I am a 75 year old white man born and raised in Georgia by good parents. While not engaging in open racism, I have been complicit in all the advantages of being white. Well into my forties, I was enthralled with civil war and loved the military exploits of Bobby Lee. Now I see the stars and bars in the same light as the Nazi flag, symbols of hate and oppression. I see now that the real and only reason the South left the Union was to protect the economics of slavery. With sadness, I know that regions of the country that are a part of my heritage made it a mission to keep blacks in bondage through economics, political control, and terror. It is past time to make amends. It is time to tell the truth. 
let's start by making some easy decisions. Take down the statute on the courthouse square. Respectfully, Wallace Moncrief. Next is a um, letter from Shandy Dipton Gossett, President and District Lieutenant Governor Chesterfield Ruotan Club in Morganton, to whom it may concern. Since my last editor, pardon me, since my last letter to the editor of the News Herald concerning the Chesterfield Elementary School, I have done extensive research within the community for opinions and suggestions for the property. I have spoken to many community members, including teachers from the school. If the county commissioners would entertain the idea of overseeing the future of this property, I can assure them that it would be in the best interest of our community and county. I have compiled an extensive list of ideas for the Chesterfield School that would benefit all involved as listed below. Community satellite locations for organizations such as the Burke County Sheriff's Office, Burke County Department of Social Services, slash Health Department, Burke County Library, Burke County Arts Council, etc. Community site for adult basic education classes, GED classes, literacy classes, special education center, etc. Classrooms for Western Piedmont Community College continuing education. Daycare center, adult or children, senior center, community site for Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, or 4-H, community center, community emergency shelter following fire or other emergency, art, art studio, gallery, weaving, painting, pottery, etc. Community site for exercise classes, yoga, etc. Office space for organizations such as the Chesterfield Volunteer Fire Department, Over Mountain Victory Trail, etc. Food pantry, soup kitchen, coat closet, community park. As you can see, many ideas have been suggested to me for portions of the Chesterfield Elementary School building and grounds. I humbly ask that full consideration is given when making the decision concerning this property. Being a longtime community member, I would like Thank you for your time and look forward to a positive outcome. Thank you, Sandy Denton Gossip. Um, next is um, a comment from Bryant Lindsay and he writes, um, please share these materials with each member of the commission at today's meeting, which you all have these in your box or have already received them. Between now and your pre-agenda meeting on August 4th, we will try to have constructive discussions with the Burke County Board of Education and Superintendent Putnam, as well as County Manager Brian Steen and County Commission as to the best way to move forward with respect to Chesterfield Elementary School. Any suggestion that Brian, you, and Chairman Cars will have in this respect would be gratefully received. Respectfully submitted, Bryant Lindsay. Next is a correspondence from Dorian Palmer. He writes, County Commissioners, First, to read the News Herald article about the 400,000 of COVID-19 relief funds being spent for electronic locks in two county buildings were very troubling. I do understand the convenience of these electronic entry systems, but in what way do these constitute using COVID-19 relief funds? So today I ask you this, wouldn't these funds be better utilized elsewhere? Hazard pay for Burke County employees, EMS workers, Burke County public school teachers, and all who are fighting this virus at the forefront would be first on my priority list. More resources for Burke County public school employees to teach both virtual and in-person classes this year would have also been a great way to spend it. I also understand that the money that was given to municipalities through Burke County was based on what said municipalities requested but if there is so much more allocated for discretionary expenses like electronic entry systems, why weren't they given more to help sm their small businesses, their employees, or additional spending caused by COVID-19? We are better than this. 400,000 should have gone further than keyless entry systems for two buildings. Secondly, is my understanding that you are addressing the petition that Burke County citizens have taken initiative to present Burke County's motto is all about advancing. So why are we fixated on keeping a statue that represents history in downtown Morganton? No one is asking you to erase the Confederacy and its leaders from the historical record. 
the history that was created by the Confederate States should and will always be taught, but why do we have to honor this brutal past of America? Not only do Confederate monuments remind many Burke County citizens of the horrific past their ancestors endured, but they also represent a time where America was divided. During these trying times, we should be encouraging unity and togetherness, not focusing our attention on keeping a statute that represents division. Many who want the statute removed are calling for relocation of the statute, not demolition. So why is this something that the Burke County Commissioners are refusing to consider? As Burke County continues to grow and our population becomes more diverse, I ask that we take into consideration the feelings of all demographics that are represented, not just the demographics of those who have a seat on the table. Thank you for your time, Dorian Palmer. Next, we have um, this from Diane Register of Morganton, and it reads um, to the Burke County Commissioners, Co. Mr. Johnny Carswell, Commission Chair, oversized flag and flagpoles in a view shed of Burke County are attracting unfavorable attention, spoiling our vistas, creating a threatening environment for our citizens, and adversely affecting our potential economic growth. As a citizen of Burke County, I, we, ask that the duly elected county commissioners act immediately to amend the county zoning ordinance to prohibit oversized flag, flag poles, or signage within the view shed of our county. Further, we ask that any grandfather clause or other provisions that would protect existing oversized flags, flag poles, or signage be removed from the ordinance and that the zoning shall be enforced. Accompanying this was a petition with 658 signatures, give or take. And lastly, this is from Deborah T. Batman, Morganton resident, who said in, in addition to the petition, in addition to the above statement, another rationale is that the impact this image is having upon the community at large, vis visitors to our county, including potential business opportunities, I understand the sons of the Confederacy veterans are primarily responsible for these flags and the purpose of preserving a heritage. I also know they are on private property. I understand the SOCV have a goal to erect mega flags in all North and South Carolina counties in reaction to the dismantling of any Confederate statutes. While I also know SOCV are not considered a hate group, they have become more radicalized in recent years and the act of erecting these flags appear retaliatory and racist. The Confederate flag is a hostile image and represents hatred to a large portion of our citizenry, whites, blacks, and brown people who drive past these flags every day. They are threatening and create a hostile climate and should not be permitted just as any other abhorrent image. Sincerely, Deborah T. Batman. That is all the comments I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Kay, and thank you uh, sincerely for the Board of Commissioners to everyone who sent in comments for us during the public comment section. All right, moving on to item number nine is our consent agenda. At this time, I will ask Brian Steen, County Manager, to present uh, that agenda. Brian? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You have seven items on your consent agenda. First, mm -hmm. DOC designation of voting delegate for the NCACC Annual Conference. Number two, clerk appointment to the PBHM Board of Directors and CFAC. Number three, clerk technical correction to JCPC term seat number seven. Item four, community development resolution to withdraw the Linville Dam Boardwalk and Trail Project from the STBG-DA program. Item five, general services, solid waste division, LaBella Associate Annual Service contract for fiscal 20. Item six, tax department, tax collection report for June 2020. And item seven, tax department release refund report for June 2020. That concludes your consent agenda. Thank you, Brian. Gentlemen, you've heard the report from Brian on the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, this is Maynard Taylor. I make the motion that we approve all seven items as submitted. All right, gentlemen, we've heard the motion from Commissioner Taylor. We'll do a roll call vote. Vice Chair Mulway? Yes. 
Commissioner Britton. Yes. And I will also vote yes, Kay, so that will be unanimous on the consent agenda. <coughs> on item number 10 is our items for decision. Our first item this evening will be an appointment to the Animal Advisory Board, and that will be presented by Madam Clerk Kay Drawn. Kay? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, members of the audience. Um, this is a request to make some appointments or reappointments to the Animal Advisory Board. Um, the terms of appointment for Alan Keller, seat number one, who represents a rescue or foster agency. Amy Burnett, seat number three, board of health member or designee. Jeff Robinson, seat number five, law enforcement, excluding animal control. And Megan Bradley, seat seven at large, pet owner, ends July 31st. Mr. Keller is not seeking reappointment, but Ms. Burnett, Captain Robinson, and Ms. Bradley are. Uh, Captain Robinson has missed several meetings because of his law enforcement duties. Ms. Bradley wishes to be considered for seat number one as she is affiliated with Hartman's Haven Rescue. There are two other applications on file for seat one, including one from Carla, Carla Wallace, excuse me, who represents Partners for Cats. Partners for Cats did not provide the requested data for the Animal Advisory Board's last quarterly audit. And the term of these appointments is for two years. Um, so for seat number one, you have the following applications on file. Megan Bradley, representing Hartman's Haven. Christina Suttles, Friends for Animals, or Carl, Carl Wallace, Partners for Cats. Um, the second part is for seat three, is to reappoint Amy Burnett for a two-year term ending July 31st, 2022. The next one is to reappoint Captain Jeff Robinson uh, to seat number five for the same term. And there was only one application on file for seat seven, and that would be to appoint Gary McClure to the Animal Advisory Board seat seven at large pet owner for a two year term ending July 31st, 2022. All right, thank you, Kay, for that presentation. Gentlemen, any questions for Kay concerning these appointments? Hearing no questions, well, I want to break this up into two motions. Let's start out with seat number one, since we uh, have some uh, people that have uh, are vying for that seat. This time, I'll entertain a motion for seat number one. Mr. Chairman, this is Scott Mulway. I move to appoint Megan Bradley, seat number one, 501C3, rescue or foster agency to the Animal Advisory Board for a two-year term and in July 31st, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Are there any other nominations for seat number one? All right, hearing no other nominations, the name that is before us is Megan Bradley. Scott has made a motion on seat number one. At this time, I'll do a roll call. Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Britton? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. And I will also vote yes, so that will be unanimous, Kay. Let's move on to the reappointments and the appointment to seat number seven. We will entertain a motion for those two appointments and the appointment on seat seven. Mr. Chairman, this is Scott Mulway again. I move to a reappoint Amy Burnett uh, for a two year term and in July 31st, 2022 for seat number three. Um, to reappoint Captain Jeff Robinson on the Animal Advisory Board seat number five for law, law enforcement, excluding animal control for a two-year term ending July 31st, 2022. And to appoint Gary McClure, uh, Animal Advisory Board seat number seven, at-large pet owner for a two-year term ending July 31st, 2022. All right, Jim, you've heard the Vice Chair's motion on the two reappointments in the appointments. Any questions or comments? Now I'll go to a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Britton? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. And I will also vote yes, Kay, so that will be unanimous on the reappointments and the appointment. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. This is Maynard. Could uh, I didn't think fast enough before we moved into that second part of that, but could we uh, also assure those others that did not get a position in the number of the seat number one, that the animals, uh, Friends for Animals will, no, Animal Advisory Board, excuse me, uh, will notify them 
uh, of any opening that might come up on that board. Uh, seems like we got a lot of good people uh, wanting to serve and we need to remain friends and encourage them to hang on because we're going to need them sometime down the road. Great comments. Thank you, sir. Kay, would you make sure that occurs? Certainly. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mayor. Our second item is a community development resolution for the Lake James Marina for the expansion of a no wake zone. And that will also be presented by Scott Carpenter, Deputy County Manager and Planning Director. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> board members. Um, Kay, could you uh, please bring up the uh, uh, wake zone extension map? Thank you so much. So the original no wake zone request was by John and Laura Auger and it was approved by the county in the late fall of 2002. However, the new owners of the marina, which uh, you know is uh, Todd Bennick and uh, Tim Newton, they have requested that the no wake zone be expanded due to unregulated speed of watercraft and resulting wave action in the areas not covered under the current no wake zone. As part of the North Carolina wildlife application, Burke County is required to hold a public hearing on the matter and adopt a new resolution of support for the request. The decision-making authority rests with the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. An application from the county shall include the application, the resolution of support, a memo identifying who will pay for the buoys and evidence of the public notice. The owners of the Lake James Marina have agreed to pay for the buoys, the chain and the anchors, as well as the installation of them, which is consistent with past adopted actions by the Board of Commissioners. So in other words, whenever anybody comes and they want a no wake zone, the county's policy has always been not to pay for the no wake zone, but to whoever is requesting it, that they pay for it and maintain the buoys. Additionally, area homeowners uh, in this area do support the no wake zone. North Carolina State Parks does uh, as well support the no wake zone and so does North Carolina Wildlife. I'm happy to answer any questions that you uh, gentlemen may have. Um, do I need to read the resolution of support? I mean, uh, from the county. No, sir, we have that copy in front of us. So, generally, you heard Scott's presentation. Any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, I've got one. It's more curious than anything else. Scott, uh, nowhere in the resolution does it mention the wake zone speed. What is that speed limit, and should it be in that resolution? So, that wake zone speed limit depends on the type of uh, watercraft. So, different watercraft produce different wakes at different speeds. And that's why there is not a one size fits all speed limit uh, there. Uh, people who are captains on their boats, they know when they're not creating a wake. Can you give us an idea? If I'm in a fish, fishing boat, what's a wake zone speed? Well, it, <laughs> it depends on the type of fishing boat. So if it's a John boat, <laughs> it might be uh, uh, 10 miles an hour. If you're in a heavy uh, fishing craft that goes into the tournaments, it could be seven miles an hour. It, so, it's not very fast. So basically it's, it's under 10 miles an hour. Generally, yes, sir. All right. You answered my question. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, Scott, I want to go back. You, I heard, I heard public hearing. Uh, I've spoken with Jr. and I don't believe we're required to have a public hearing on this. Is that correct, uh, Attorney Simpson? I think you're only required to give public notice. That's okay. Correct. All right. So that that is uh, out of the way there. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments? From a boater who goes through that area every weekend, along with uh, another commissioner that's with me tonight, I think we both would, would sorely say that this is sorely needed. Uh, so with that said, the chair will entertain a motion. 
Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt resolution number 2020-21 and approve agreement. All right, gentlemen, you've heard uh, Commissioner Britton's motion. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Vice Chair Mulwee? Yes. Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. And yes from me, Kate, that passes unanimously. Thank you so very much. All right, moving on to item number three is from Burke Development. It is an interlocal agreement and bid award for a water tank at the Burke Business Park presented by Alan Wood from BDI. Alan? Thank you, I had to get unmuted. Uh, we do have uh, bids for uh, the construction of the water tank and for the booster station. Uh, those were approved this past Friday. It, it did require a rebid since we did not receive uh, the required three bids <clears throat> at the first offering of this. Uh, the uh, winner of, or the low bid on the uh, tank itself is Phoenix Fabricators. Uh, their bid came in at uh, 1,578,059. And then there were two alternate bids. Uh, one was to put uh, the uh, logo for Burke Business Park there. And then uh, the uh, alternate to also do nature's playground logo for the tourism development authority uh, that would have been uh, that would be covered by the development authority so there would be no budgetary impact on uh, us for that <clears throat> the uh, pump station we ended up with actually four bids uh, on the day that those uh, were uh, acknowledged the low bid there was uh, Lock Lane Construction out of uh, Stony Point, North Carolina at uh, $462,273.22. Uh, the um, total projected cost <clears throat> of everything, which includes the construction uh, design geotechnical work, all the required uh, work that is done, inspections to be done, and contingency comes out to $2,322,116.36. That does include $104,240 or 5% of the bid uh, that is set aside for contingency. <clears throat> so, uh, just a little more background. We received one point, we have 1.97 million roughly, uh, or 1.29 million, I'm sorry, uh, in grant money from uh, North Carolina Department of Commerce. That requires a 25% bid, 25% uh, match. Uh, City of Morganton is covering $75,000 of that required match by payment to West Consultants uh, for their engineering work. The, uh, there's $223,000 roughly that is in a uh, savings account or a, a money market account that was set aside for work at the business park. That would be used for match and then the balance uh, would need to uh, be covered uh, from uh, funds by the county. Uh, roughly $275,000, depending on the contingencies, uh, is what that. When we did the resolution, I think originally that uh, we put up to $400,000. So we did come in below. Uh, what the maximum was that we had determined. And that does include uh, if we use that contingency. So that should be, by all the numbers we have, uh, that should be the maximum amount that we're looking at. 
and I, I think uh, the county attorney has been working on the interlocal agreement, so he and Brian would have more information on that than I do. So, JR, if, would you like to give us an update on that? Well, we've been working on this interlocal agreement for uh, for a month now, and uh, even as late as this afternoon, we were going back and forth with uh, with changes. We now have it in a form that I think Kay sent out around lunchtime, and um, it uh, uh, puts the county in charge of the project. At the end of the project, the water tank and the pump system will be transferred to the city of Morganton, who will then uh, operate it for the life of the uh, uh, of the business park. This is a half a million gallon tank. It is necessary for fire suppression <clears throat> for any business that would go to the park, and it should more it should cover any requirement for fire suppression that we can uh, foresee uh, for the future. All right, gentlemen, you've heard Alan's presentation along with JR's. Any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, uh, Scott here, just, just for clarity, JR, for uh, general information, once we transfer that, uh, that particular piece to the city, we're held harmless for any liability at that point, I assume and any, there will be no upkeep or anything like that as far as on our part. At that point, the city is in charge of operation and maintenance, and we would not have any further liability once we have uh, transferred it to them. Okay, thank you. And Alan, I just want to make a comment. I know you've been working on this project for years, so it's, it's great to see this come to fruition. And so uh, we can move forward at this point. So great work. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Mr. Chairman, I, I have a couple. Of, the first one is, Alan, I'm, I'm probably incorrect on this, but I did a little research and could not find uh, what I was looking for. But in the beginning, I thought this was supposed to be a $1 million tank, not a 500. Oh, you mean, no, 500,000, uh, uh, 500,000 is the uh is the size that's needed <clears throat> and that, that was uh it was determined that you could possibly go a little smaller than that but you run the risk of not having sufficient coverage so it is a half a million gallon well the good news is and the bids came in and obviously they're going to cover the cost of this the only other question i had is kind of looking out of the, after the little folks, cause I read this uh, article and uh, only it looks like that uh, Morgan and City is the one who's gonna gain the most because they're gonna sell the water uh, to whoever out there. But anyhow, uh, what about these other little communities, um, uh, Valdez, uh, Rutherford College, uh, I don't remember if Drexel was in it, but anyhow, um, it's, it's obviously that uh, they're not yet getting anything for their investment in it. Uh, uh, is that coming down the road or how, how do we look at that? How do, how do we keep the things rolling so that they can get uh, some of their investment back? Well, without the tank, we really have no chance of doing that because we cannot have structures that required fire suppression. So this is a step that has to take place for that part to uh, meet its anticipated and needed goals. Once, uh, so to do that, first we have to have the tank and then we are moving forward full bore with finding uh, possible users for this facility. Uh, I have, we, we're marketing it constantly. Uh, specifically, uh, we uh, are on LinkedIn. We have a new website that's coming up uh, that features this site uh, a great deal. And I have it from a lot of my contacts. 
that this is one of the handful of best ready to go business park sites in North Carolina, as far as pad ready sites go. Uh, I mean, I understand that it has been there for a while. We've been through a lot while that uh, park has been there. And uh, with some of the things that may or may not come out of COVID, we think that there's going to be uh, more reshoring and having this park ready to go is the best chance that we have for everybody starting to see a return on their investment. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly until we, until we got water, uh, we, were, we were not getting anywhere with it. And it, it, this is a blessing to say the least. Um, but also how about the natural gas? We were, we were talking about that at one point. Is it, is, has it been uh, completed to the park or are we still waiting on that? It will depend on who the user is. So I can't give you a, a real short answer on that. If it is someone that just requires uh, gas for uh, heating and cooling purposes, then we're ready to go very, very quickly. If it's a heavy gas user, uh, it, it, it requires more work. And it, uh, but even, even with that, uh, I have been assured as we continue to work with Piedmont Natural Gas, who's the supplier there, that when there is a user, that they can and would have uh, service to the park uh, in sufficient time for that business to, to be ready to go and, and they would not hold up the process. Yeah. Well, I certainly appreciate your hard work and continuance on that project. Uh, I hope, hopefully we'll have a, a tenant in there before the end of the year. Well, it, it's, it's definitely our goal. And uh, what we have now would be a race if we could announce one now, who we could be ready to go, have a building up first or a water tank. Yeah, good. Any other questions or comments? All right, hearing none, we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the interlocal agreement between the County of Burke and the City of Morganton concerning construction and operation of a water tank for the Burke Business Park. Authorize the Chairman to execute the agreement on behalf of the Board and to award the bid to, do we have that name? For the tank, it is Phoenix Fabricators and Erectors, LLC. Okay. And for the uh, pump station, Lock Lane Construction Incorporated. Yes, I read that. Thank you. I, it just wasn't convenient to read right at the moment. And I can't read anything else, Madam Clerk. Is there okay. a third item to this? If you will refer to your chairman's notes, Everything you need is there. I'll be happy to read it for you. This information was not available when that document was created that you're seeing on your screen. Um, to award a bid to Phoenix Fabricators and Erectors LLC in the amount of $1,586,059, contract A, alternate bid item A1, the business, work business park logo and authorize the chairman to execute the notice to proceed to award a bid to Lock Lane Construction Inc. in the amount of $462,273.22, contract B, booster station, and authorize the chairman to execute the notice to proceed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. My, my uh, chairman's notes ended with two, number two. <laughs> So if you sent something after lunchtime today, I didn't get it. I, I would not have received it. All right, Jim, you've heard Commissioner Taylor's motion. Uh, now do a roll call vote. Vice Chair Mulwee? Yes. Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Britton? Yes. And I will vote yes also, so that will be unanimous. Thank you very much, Alan. Good work. Thank you. Okay. All right, look, we'll move into our reports and comments section. Uh, let's start with uh, Commissioner Abley. None. Commissioner Britton. I have none. Thank you. 
All right, Commissioner Taylor. Mr. Chairman, may I use mine to, uh, I've been doing a good bit of studying on the Civil War and, and there's so much people don't know. Could I just share a, a few facts about this, uh, the American Civil War, uh, especially after we received the comments that we did today from, from those folks? Um, a lot of people do not realize that uh, the Civil War claimed 620,000 American casualties, which is more than all six wars combined since then. And most people don't know that there was 190,000 African Americans who fought in the Civil War. They fought on both sides, 90% of them or better, fought on the Union side. Um, if you count some of the new figures that historians are producing, they're saying it's the most costly war, both in lives and material and goods and property. Uh, it is, it uh, passes World War II for American citizens. They say 400,000 are missing, which would bring that total of, to 1 million lives American lives, by the way, lost in the uh, Civil War. Uh, it's interesting to know that uh, of those 190,000 American, uh, African American casualties, 20,000 of them also died in that war. And, and, it, and that's just to uh, kind of acknowledge that this war affected all of us. Um, and it, it, in my opinion, it deserves to be, to remain as an important part of our history and our history studies. And I've got more, but I'll end at that and appreciate the opportunity. All right, sir, any other comments or any other reports from you, sir? All right. Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, Vice Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, just a quick, um, I, I, our uh, reports have already been submitted, but I did want to highlight a couple of things. I talked to Alan, I mean, um, Alan, I'm thinking Alan went now because Alan was on here, but uh, Ed Phillips this morning from TDA, and uh, he sent in his report. Y'all had a chance to look at it, but to give you kind of an idea of the challenges we had in the last couple of months, you know, the TDA is funded through occupancy tax collections, and so those tax collections were down 41% in March, 70% in April, and 59% in May, um, year over year, to kind of give you an idea of the, the situation with COVID. So I will say uh, that's the negative positive. They have been trending back upward. Um, there's a lot more rooms getting filled, especially on weekends. And so it is looking up. Um, TDA's run multiple summer campaigns i um, been really creative to um, draw more uh, folks from surrounding areas, heavily advertised everywhere from Greenville, South Carolina, to Raleigh, North Carolina, to Charlotte. So uh, things are picking back up somewhat, and so looking a little more rosy. Uh, as far as coming into the visitor center, I've had a lot of visitors from New England and the Mid-Atlantic region looking to ro relocate. So, uh, you know, that's positive as well. So we've you know, foot traffic is picking back up. It's not where it was, but it is getting better. So that's that's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Okay, let me do a couple of courtesy reminder. Well, let me go back to JR and uh, let's go back to Kay first. Kay, you got anything you want to report? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay, Mr. County Manager. Yes, sir, I've got some pictures for you. Okay. Uh, in response to the COVID, um, Iris and the court's operation. Kay, if, if you can show those. We have a picture of the uh, conference center empty and a conference center in use with a large number of people there for court. I'm looking for it, Brian. Uh, it was on my desktop and it has been moved um, 
I also have a picture of construction work that's underway with the senior center to, to re resolve some issues we have there with water intrusion. But if nothing else, we'll, we'll get those out to you in an, in another time. Sorry, thank you. No problem, it happens, my friend. JR. Yes, sir. Since the last meeting of the Board of Commissioners on June 16th, um, I have assisted the chairman in preparation of a third amendment to the COVID-19 state of emergency to allow high risk activities in the Limble Gorge and Pisgah National Forest and in other areas of Burke County that were previously forbidden by the state of emergency. Um, I've reviewed and approved the uh, 10 contracts with nonprofits for annual grants under the 2021 annual budget. Um, received the proposed interlocal agreement uh, between Morganton and the county prepared by the city of Morganton. Uh, we had a series of meetings uh, between city and county staff where this project was discussed. I prepared the second draft of the uh, of the uh, interlocal agreement. We had another meeting and a third draft was prepared, which is the draft that you all have signed off on uh, today. I further attended the bid opening for the water tank project that followed uh, the last meeting with uh, city staff. A uh, following investigation, I prepared a notice to council for James Paget of his uh, violation of the county's order judgment and injunction against him and of our intent to seek to have him held in contempt of court. If you recall, this involves the barrier loop property, uh, which was in violation of the county's master zoning ordinance, environmental compliance ordinance, and public nuisance law. Um, I've met with the sheriff and the county manager and the sheriff's executive staff to discuss possible and appropriate uses for the sheriff's drug fund forfeitures. I have reviewed in, uh, the Sage Security Solutions proposed contract with the county for changes to the county building's elect electronic lock systems. Um, I have reviewed a proposed contract between the uh, American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals and the Burke County Animal uh, Services Department for the free spaying and neutering of county shelter animals. And I am currently uh, working to review proposed changes to the county animal ordinance to reflect changes in enforcement from the Burke County Sheriff's Office to the County Animal Services Department. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. JR. Mr. Chairman, ahead, I have Jay. located that folder. I can uh, reshare my screen. Pop them pictures up there. Maybe. <laughs> Let me find my sharing button. Okay. All right, let's see here. Share screen. Oh. Okay, can you All see right. that? Go ahead, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's the room set up. Um, it shows the, the size we're able to, to help serve the, the court system and meets the social distancing requirement. Um, if you go to the next slide, I'll, you'll see a session. It, I was just going to point out that's at the Higher Education Center, Foothills Higher Ed Center. Yes. Okay. Next. Can you see it? Yep, I'm, I'm looking for the one with people. Well, let's there start. you go. And the last picture is the work that started, um, I think it was early last week, down at the uh, Senior Center to help us resolve some water intrusion problems there at that building. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. County Manager. Appreciate that so much, okay? I'm glad we could be able to help the court system out by providing Foothills Higher Education Center to do some district court work. A couple of reminders. Uh, first one is that, again, we'll be July the 23rd at 10 o'clock for our special Zoom meeting for um, a project. Um, 
Also, um, please, uh, for those of you that are listening and watching us, like us on Facebook. Please don't litter. Let's try to keep Burke County as clean as we can. We're doing a relatively uh, better job now on the 2020 census, but I uh, please want to remind everyone, if you have not completed the census, please go in and do that census. Please, it is important to all of us. Again, uh, for our friends and Caitlin down at Animal Services, please have your pets spayed or neutered. And uh, our NCACC annual conference will be by Zoom this year. That'll be in two stages. Uh, please remember August the 5th and August the 6th, and again on August the 12th, and again on August the 13th. Um, there's a special day tomorrow. I believe that would be Commissioner Britton's 29th birthday again. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, a lot again. Yeah, okay. All right. So, uh, happy birthday to you, sir. You know, we typically have a cake and everything here, and uh, I do miss it by, by these meetings. Also, I, I want to uh, thank everybody that's been in the chat box. Uh, we have been reading your, your comments there. Uh, some of these, we will get back to you on that. So thank you for using the uh, chat box. At this time, we'll go to Kay for the vacancy announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, audience members. We have the following vacancies on boards and committees. The Adult Care and Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee, Council on Aging, Regional Aging Advisory Committee, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, City of Morganton Board of Adjustment and Planning Board for the ETJ, Voluntary Agriculture Board, Burke County Board of Adjustment and Planning Board, Burke Senior Center Advisory Council, and the Recreation Commission. All right, thank you, Kay. Uh, gentlemen, we had been anticipated a closed session, but some new information came to us just late this afternoon. Therefore, I am not gonna have the closed session. We have got to take this information and do some validation and put together a, another presentation for you. So we will do that and have the closed session at our pre-agenda meeting. All right, with nothing else in front of us this evening, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move, Mr. Move, Mr. Chairman. All right, roll call vote. Vice Chair Mulway. Yeah. Mr. Abley. Yes. Mr. Britton. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. And I will vote yes myself. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. We're off. Thank you. Hello, I'm Brian Steen, the Burke County Manager, and I'd like to introduce you to Zeke, Ty, and Chloe. They're my three pets, and I adopted them all from rescue agencies. I hope if you're thinking about getting a dog or a cat, you'll consider contacting our local rescue agencies and adopt one. If you have a cat or a dog, I hope you'll also consider having them spay or neutered to help us reduce the number of unwanted pets in Burke County. Whatever you can do to help us would be appreciated, and in a moment we'll show you some contact information for both the rescue agencies in Burke County and agencies that can help you with low-cost spay and neuter. Thank you again. I hope you have a great day. Wolf. Thank you.